Somebody tell me how I'm supposed to feel. Hey everybody, Jacob here and welcome to another edition of the Improviser's Guide to the Cello Lick of the Week. And today we're going to be doing a very special, very funky, very groovy edition featuring the bass player Thundercat. You know, I got to play with Thundercat for the first time when I was about 21 at Catalina Bar and Grill, which is a famous jazz club here in Los Angeles. And a couple of you guys sent me this video about a year ago from his Tiny Desk concert, which I absolutely love, especially because it features two of my very good musical friends here in LA, keyboard player Dennis Hamm, who is Thundercat's regular keyboard player, and also plays keyboard in the Jacobs Kelly Trio from time to time, and the amazing Miguel Atwood Ferguson, who is playing five-string violin uh, with Thundercat, but who played viola in my string quartet, Supernova, um, which was a big part of my performing and recording uh, all throughout my 20s. This has been another episode of Name Dropping with Jacob Sakelli. Now, if you'd like to follow along with this lesson, you can download a free PDF below of the quick transcription I did. And I'll give you just a minute to do that. Great. And as you can hear, Thundercat uses a lot of effects, particularly that envelope filter and octaver. So big apologies to him if I didn't get this transcription exactly right. Now that you've got it downloaded, let's take a minute before we dive into the actual lesson part of this video to play through this slowly just to make sure we've got the lay of the land here. And to make things easier to see, I'm going to transition to my regular four string cello. This lick is based around a B-flat pedal the Thundercat initiates right at the beginning before the fill actually starts and the band kind of sustains through. And I'm using the fingering that's in the worksheet, but feel free to use whatever type of fingering is most comfortable to you. We're not going to spend any time today talking about fingerings or articulations or anything related to the performance of this fill today. Like all the videos in this series, this isn't about how to play this particular Thundercat lick, more about how to play like Thundercat. So let's talk about three of the main ingredients in this particular fill and in Thundercat's playing in general. First, let's talk about Thundercat's note choices. So the scale he's using here, unsurprisingly, is a go-to for everyone, the pentatonic scale. In this case, it's the B-flat minor pentatonic, as we're playing over a B-flat pedal here. But Thundercat frequently adds a special soulful ingredient. That is the second scale degree. So in this case, the key of B-flat, that would be the note C. And within the shape I'm using, you'll notice that I have an extend and hop now to reach back for that second scale degree. Extend and hop. That second scale degree also fits really well in our shape an octave higher. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. I've heard musicians and other instrumentalists refer to this as a neo-soul scale, or a hexatonic scale, as now we're using six total notes. But much like the minor blues scale, which is also technically a hexatonic scale, I like to keep things simple by basically thinking of this as a garden variety pentatonic with an added second or ninth scale degree. The ninth in this type of harmonic context is always a really beautiful color. And Thundercat uses it both as a point of emphasis and also adds it into his scale work to break up the monotony of the minor pentatonic sound by itself. Another important ingredient here is Thundercat's use of a very specific scale pattern. Starting from any note in the scale, 
I'll demonstrate with the root note, B flat. Play the first three notes, and then go down one note, essentially to the next available scale degree, and repeat. to refer to this pattern as three up and one down. One of the things that makes this three note grouping sound cool in this context is that it's presented in 16th notes, so we have a natural hemiola happening. If you've ever watched any of our other Lick of the Week videos, you know that one of my absolute soapboxes is the idea of looking for variations in great solos that we've transcribed. In other words, where does the soloist repeat himself? This is important because a lot of the time we're hung up on learning as much language and as many licks as we can, but transcribing these great artists reminds us that it's really their ability to create endless variations with the few tricks that they've deeply mastered and absorbed rather than trying to learn the entire Slonimsky book or the Charlie Parker Omni book uh, to be able to be competent soloists. But it's also important to look for variations from a practicing standpoint. You see, a lot of the time we'll be presented with a new idea or a new scale from our teacher or someone we're studying with on YouTube. And then that teacher will say, and now go and create some variations of your own. This is what I like to call pass the buck teaching. Because with any great piece of musical language, no matter how small, there are so many choices that it's incredibly easy to overwhelm us. And then we just go back to playing the same stuff that we always play. Or trying to awkwardly fit this new piece of language in in a very unmusical and uncomfortable way, the same way that we might when we're trying to insert a new vocabulary word we've learned but aren't completely comfortable with yet. So the best way to learn a new lick or to strengthen our ability to spontaneously create variations that are musical and make sense is to look at the different ways that great players essentially play the same lick or idea over and over again within their solos. So let's check out a few ways that Thundercat uses this three up one down concept to keep it musically interesting and not too obvious sounding. Thundercat starts his fill off with this exact three up one down concept. Notice though that he starts from the seventh scale degree as starting from the root might be a little obvious sounding at the beginning. Thundercat immediately repeats the same concept, but instead of playing, he turns the penultimate note into a grace note. Then Thundercat plays a variation of this same concept again, and this time he also repeats from the same finger he started on, instead of going down to the next available scale tone. Returning to that A flat, this section, Thundercat spices up the B flat minor pentatonic scale by adding several G flats, implying the key of B flat natural minor or B flat aeolian. Here, really good to be able to find that note in the context of this particular hand shape and at the bottom of the run. And would you believe? Thundercat wraps up the fill using one more iteration of this same three up one down concept. And notice he uses the same descending variation that he used in bar one, repeating the note we started with in the first group at the beginning of the second group. As much as it's valuable to notice variations that a player will create on a concept to avoid sounding lame, it's also good to check out things they don't do with that concept. As many times as Thundercat repeats this particular pattern concept in this tiny solo, he never 
plays it more than twice in a row. This helps us from being able to hear the pattern too easily or making it too obvious sounding. Once we get to three or four iterations, it starts to sound a lot more like a practice room warm-up exercise. Sometimes Thundercat limits this number of repeats by simply adding a ghost note or long tone in between strings of the pattern, like the opening riff, for example. In between, there's that one ghosted note that gives us just enough refreshment to keep the pattern less obvious and more interesting in our ears. He also uses two scale notes to transition out of the pattern at the very end. But my favorite way that he obscures this three up one down pattern is to start it with a long expressive tone right before launching into the riff. The first time with the slide. And the second time with the standard grace note. Both of these licks also share something in common from a phrasing standpoint starting on less stable notes of the scale, in the case of bar one, the ninth from our new neo-soul scale that we're using, and in the case of the last bar, the E-flat, which is the fourth, definitely a non-chord tone. And both of these licks eventually resolve to the root and third of the B-flat triad, which is really nice phrasing and gives us a good sense of resolving. And of course, the really cool thing is you can apply these exact same techniques to any other musical sequence or pattern you may be working on. Well, that's it for now, you guys. Please be sure to hit the like and smash the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. And along with this great lick, I hope you got some real insight as to how to approach and study whatever type of music you're currently exploring.